from Tuscaloosa, from out in the Black Belt, like people that I care so deeply about, and you know, new friends as well. This is my first solo art show. So it's very exciting. Um, I'm honored to be kicking off this series uh, of, that will showcase women artists over the next year here at Kentuck, and I'm honored to be kicking that part off. Uh, so thank you for coming to see my show. My stuff is basically, uh, I think you kind of get a sense of it. Um, I, I, I sort of have come to doing um, stitching and working with Viber kind of later in life. Um, I originally was a dancer and trained as a dance movement therapist at Pratt Institute. Uh, where I worked with uh, on an inpatient psychiatric unit in Brooklyn in one of the fourth poorest neighborhoods in the country. Um, I saw a lot and I saw, um, you know, I saw how the arts in general were um, incredibly healing um, to, you know, just a, a wide demographic of people who were really the most marginalized and the most in, in need of that. So that's always been something that has really continued to inspire my work and for myself as well. Um, I, you know, when I was, when I was younger, I would hang around lots of artists and I couldn't really draw very well. So, I mean, what do you do when you can't really draw very well? You just hang out with a lot of artists and you start doing like weird quirky things. You start doing like performance art, you start showing up in places like, you know, wearing giant masks and naked and like dancing to like, you know, a bass and a drum. And, you know, I just kind of kept surrounding myself with that. Again, I was trained as a dancer. So I've always sort of been around uh, and, and involved in arts. Um, in terms of the themes with my, with my show here and finding my religion, I grew up raised um, Italian Roman Catholic um, I went to Catholic school for 10 years and it was rough. It was very fire and brimstone. I was, um, as you might imagine, kind of the weird kid. So, you know, I got picked on a lot. I got bullied a lot, um, you know, but honestly, initially I was like a little uh, religious zealot in some ways. Um, you know, I, I wanted something to believe in and to hold on to. You know, and then as which happens in life, you start to undergo some, some tough times. And where I turned to my faith and my church and thought that they were gonna be the people that held me up and supported and loved me through it, they did exactly the opposite. Um, you know, it's, uh, and that just devastated and crushed me. You know, and the fact that I was being rejected um, just you know sort of pushed me further into into bad decisions and poor choices in life um you know but that's okay because you know it is it's all part of who i am you know and uh i think that's where i, I realize that i'm grateful now for the scars that i have and the the pain that i've been through because it's it's you know i have found light i have found sort of my way out i guess um and when all of this happened, I really like renounced religion. I renounced Catholicism. I was like, I'm, I'm done. I don't want anything to do with this. And I ran from it from a, for a long time. And, um, you know, as I hit my own bottom, I, I came into a fellowship that, you know, spirituality was a part of. And I started slowly kind of like dipping my toe back in, but like it didn't really make a lot of sense for me. You know, it just, it was still like, uh, I don't know about this. Well. I ended up in New Paltz, New York, which is a crazy progressive town full of artists and wonderful people. And I started realizing that there was all these sort of um, more uh, paganistic practices, <coughs> different paths to spirituality that were available that didn't sort of hold the same harm for me that, that uh, you know, my Catholic upbringing did. So I kind of turned to that for a while and then I just, life goes on and you sort of do your dance and you move through and away. And, and um, as I had children, I decided again that I wanted to have something. I just, I, I felt like being a mother was the most incredible thing that I'd ever experienced. I mean, I felt like it, if, if, if there's a God, that has got to be the closest thing to, to it that there is. 
you know, to, to, you know, having life, to nursing life, to bringing life into this world and caring and nurturing is two of my favorite years. <laughs> um, and I wanted to be connected not just to, to that, but to, you know, like the universe in general. And um, I started, again, started moving back towards different paths. And a couple of Christmases ago, my father started reminding me of these different like uh, simmer pots and these sort of, he was kind of being silly, but he was doing thing with this egg and like this egg cleansing thing. And it just got me thinking like, oh yeah, you know, like when I was early into recovery, like I, there was all this stuff that I was like into and it just kind of made sense to sort of like jump back into that. And when I tell you that it has had, I've been able to not just go to something new, but to sort of integrate and synthesize um, those parts that I thought were lost and gone forever, you know, are no longer lost and gone to me. You know, the the Virgin Mother who, uh, you know, my confirmation name, I was named, you know, she was my saint. She's still the Universal Mother, you know. She's still all of these things on, 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 on archetypes, um, you know, through different cultures, through different religions, you know, we, they're all the same, you know, and to me, the way of, the divine is with us at all times, you know, and I think that a way of practicing that is to just go for a walk by yourself, see what draws your attention, you know, whether it's a color or a shape in nature, um, a stick, a rock, a tree, and then later on, like, think about that, write about that, um, and, and that's kind of like how I feel I, it's good for my mental health and it helps me grow as a person, you know? So if I'm out and I'm drawn to like all of a sudden all these spirals, you know, I start thinking about what that means, you know, in a broader context, in a bigger context. And like, how is the universe, like my attention, my brain, my unconscious was pulled towards these today. So like, what does that mean? What is the, what is the universe? What is nature trying to teach me? And that's try, kind of try, how I tried to live my life, is to try to take the gifts from the universe that are there for all of us if we just open our eyes and are willing to look at them and receive them. They're there. It's, and with, you know, no matter what you want to call it, no matter what spirituality, religion, practice, you know, but it's there, it's accessible, and all, but you, you know, it does take putting into work and practice. So my <laughs> stitchings, I think, kind of are a reflection of, of my spiritual practice and, you know, integrate those underpinnings of Catholicism with more contemporary paganistic practices that are really just about me. Like, I'm not, I'm not like going to any sort of, you know, organized events. It's just to me. It's, you know, and if that helps you, you know, I guess I'm telling you this because it's helped me so much. So if you're going through a tough time, go to the Arboretum, take a walk, Take a journal with you. Notice what you're drawn to. Is it sounds? You know, is it colors? Is it shape? Is it texture? You know, feel the texture. <coughs> smell the smells. You know, really be present, be with it, and write about it. And, and then that's gonna end up having you write about yourself. Like those, I guarantee you, that writing is gonna then jostle something in you. And you're gonna be like, oh, and I remember when I was a child, or, you know, whatever it is, it's like, it's. You know, it's all ther inherently therapeutic if you open up and allow it to be that. So I, I, when I took on this show, I didn't put together that it is February 1st, which is St. Bridget's Day and in bulk. Um, in bulk would be the more, you know, paganistic holiday. And um, St. Bridget was known to be born um, with a flame in her hair uh, and was nursed by a mystical cow. And she taught a fox to dance. <laughs> Pretty cool. Um, so I invite you, as I think some people have already, if you want to, when we think about this time of year, right, we're, we're at the halfway point between the, the end of the darkness and the cold is, is in sight now, right? We're halfway between um, winter solstice and spring equinox. So we now, you know, we know that there's light at the end of the tunnel, the return of the sun. And, and, and I think of the phrase in the belly, because right now it's like all the seeds are underneath in your garden, under your fertile soil. They're all like starting to peek and poke out and they're like ready to kind of, you know, get moving and grooving. So I invite you to think about the things in your life right now that you would like to manifest um, for this next year. 
because it's a wonderful time for thinking about those goals and dreams and desires. Um, and if you so wish, you, there's some paper I have up here and a pen. You can write those down. There are fire pits that are on outside. And I invite you to release that to the fire, to St. Bridget or the fire element or the universe or God or whatever you want to call it. And I mean, this is kind of how this show came up. It, it, in December of 2022, at my parents' house in our family Yule ritual, I manifested that I wanted to do have my own solo art show. And it was offered to me in 2023 and it's come to fruition right at the beginning of 2024. Again, like I tell the students that I work with, like wishes are wonderful, but you have to also put the work in. You know, you can't just say, I wanna have my own solo art show and like do nothing. So, you know, put the work in, do that for yourself if you so wish. And um, I didn't have anything prepared, so thank you for, for your patience and listening. <laughs>